the thing we started last year, of course, was printing the program. So we have, which is it's slightly shocking in terms of the traditions of Spoleto, both in Italy and here. Uh, but for the most part, we've had positive feedback. My one concern is when I program weird, unknown stuff that I think is some of the best stuff I've ever written, but pe people might come to it and see it posted and go, what the heck is twe? I don't want to go hear that. I have no idea what it is. So that's my only worry. So I'll just go through the, the programs and hopefully illuminate, especially pieces that are lesser known to people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really excited that, from a quartet point of view, A, the St. Lawrence Quartet is here the whole time, and B, Scott St. John, my great friend and colleague, um, who was not here last year because he was having a baby, or his wife Sharon was having a baby, is back in full force. And so the quartet will be playing a lot throughout the festival, uh, both alone and with colleagues. So we're going to start with my favorite composer, Haydn. If I, actually, if I could program all Haydn all the time, I would. I'd probably be fired in a year. But So we're going to start with one of his great string quartets, the Quentin, Opus 76, number 2. Um, Haydn on all cylinders. It's just as good as it gets from 1796. And, and then, he, and he really kind of perfected the form. Oh, right? but beyond perfected. I mean, Haydn and string quartet is, is just, there's nobody even close to as good or as prolific. So we, we forget that about Haydn. So you'll hear there'll be two or three good pieces of Haydn this year, uh, and we're excited that Tara Helen O'Connor, who's become really the le world's leading flute player, a remarkable talent. Uh, so she'll sort of break up this first program with this crazy solo flute piece called the Great Train Race, which is basically, if you can imagine, you probably can't, the flute becoming a train, uh, sonically speaking. It's really an amazing virtuoso display by Tara, and we'll end with what you hear in the background right now, if you can hear the Chausson Concerto for Violin, Piano, and String Quartet, Opus mm -hmm. 21, or Chausson, uh, again, one of my favorite composers, French Romantic. It's a, a virtuoso display for the two solo instruments and a luscious, romantic, expressive uh, piece as a whole. One of my favorite, and that's slightly lesser known pieces, but uh, as much because the piano part is so hard, but <laughs> Renan is going to lay it down. So that's the first show. And the second show, we have two pieces of American music. And when you hear that, you usually think, oh, American, modern American music, un unlistenable. But this is early 20th century romantic American music. Uh, and people who know each other, Arthur Foote and Amy Beach. So the Foote night music for flute and string quartet, an incredibly evocative, almost impressionistic piece and the Amy Beach Piano Quintet which we played early, earlier this year we're really excited to discover. It was one of those moments we were we were teaching at a university in Arizona and one of the student groups came in playing this Beach Piano Quintet we said this is great we have to play this so we programmed it at Stanford with Pedja and it was so good we had such a good time we thought we'll, we'll bring it here. So we have American Romantic Music and yeah. isn't Amy Beach sort of coming into her own arms? Well, yeah, really she wrote a lot and... of really great music, and it was sort of out of fashion for many years. Uh, but she's very gifted, and it's very rare, um, especially then, in 1918, to have a woman be a successful composer. It's, uh, so it's really a, it's a great story, and it's a great piece. And so that we have an American romantic sandwich, and in the middle, I'm really excited, I've wanted to do this for years, all the Haydn London symphonies, symphonies that he wrote, for, uh, when he went to London as a rock star, he was brought there by this guy Solomon in the 1790s, um, were arranged and, and published by Solomon for piano quintet um, and flute. So we're doing the Solomon arrangement of the Clock Symphony in, in the middle of this program. So it's, uh, I'm super excited about that. We don't get to play Haydn symphonies that often, and it's a work of incredible genius. So that's the first two programs. And didn't Solomon get a string quartet named after him? Oh yeah, a whole set. I mean, a lot of. I mean, he was an amazing guy to have the foresight to get and get the money together to bring Haydn to England and write all this music, these string quartets and the, all twelve of the London symphonies. 